Listen, this was a game changer for me. Let me tell you, a big ass game changer for me. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in this video today, <laughs> Boy, I have a banger for you. I'm not banger like it's gonna make you laugh. It's probably gonna make you cry because you're gonna realize that crap, we have some work to do. But it's okay, I went through that too. You know, when I first came across a lot of this information, I went through my depression phase. Like, holy crap, I have a lot of work to do. But what's important is for you to know the information now so you can start on it now, right? So, all right, guys, in this video, I'm gonna share the top five tricks, secrets, strategies that the wealthiest people in my network have taught me. Some of my the wealthiest, some of my wealthiest friends, they teach me quite a bit, and I want to share some of that with you in this video. Let me give a little bit of a backstory real quick. I never grew up with access to this information, you see. What I know now, I know through maybe three major avenues. One, I make a crap load of mistakes and I learn from them. Number two, I read and research a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. A lot a lot a lot you need to do that read 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 and research and thirdly it's because i've planted myself in certain networks i've planted myself in certain friendships so what happens is that you know just by even hanging out regular hanging out getting a drink you are learning so much and you're soaking up so much information like a flipping sponge that's what it's like right um and the thing is if you're actually a good friend and you're you realize that you're really a trying to life they will help you and so in this video i'm going to share five of those things that i have learned right and by the way let me just tell you that these people that i'm talking about they got some shmoney shmoney it's not no fenke fenke money these people earn i'm gonna say two over 200 million dollars per year right and i mean i know there are wealthier people I know there are wealthier people in Jamaica, but I'm just, hey, I'm just being honest with you. These are the wealthiest people in my network. Maybe there are, maybe I know wealthier people, but I don't really talk to them like that to know, you know, that kind of information. But hey, tell the information or leave it. That is it. And if I were you, I would take it. Go get your pen and paper and let's get into this. The first thing is use your assets and or passive income to fund your lifestyle i did a video a couple videos back on how i fund my lifestyle a great majority of you took what i wanted you to take from the video which is how i do it like literally a strategy like literally a step one step two some of you completely missed the point completely missed the point and more concerned about the um um like the, the uh what do you call it like the scandalous part of it newsflash there is no scandalous nothing happening on this channel this channel is about information and learning right but the thing about it is that this is a strategy that I was taught and the strategy that I employed in my own life. And I am telling you, it is a game changer. Go back to that video, How I Found My Lifestyle to get the step one, step two, um, to sort of plug it into your life. But essentially, use assets and or passive income to fund your lifestyle. You should not, for example, let me give a practical example. If you want to buy a car and you want to take out a loan for the car, instead of taking out a loan to buy this car a loan to pay for this car and you have to pay this monthly from your active income use the income from your assets or your passive income to pay this loan you should not have to do it actively um, and this is if you want to take out a loan i'm just giving you some options here right this is these are just options so that's the first thing um the second thing is listen this was a game changer for me let me tell you, a big ass game changer for me. Well, let me give you a couple of a backstory on this, right? So I have this friend. He's pretty cool. He's just like, you, you wouldn't know that this man has all this money. The only way you would know is if you know, you know, his companies and the companies of the companies, right? You would know that, all right, he has some money. But just by looking at him, you wouldn't know. Just by his lifestyle, you wouldn't know, right? He's just generally cool. So when I met this guy, that's what I thought. He was just a cool guy and, you know, we reason a lot and that's pretty much what that is. But then one time he taught, he said something to me. He said, Anna, I, oh, I, let me tell you, I was telling him about the formula that I have in my book and that how oh, I use that same formula for my own life. And he was like, Anna, that's a good starting point. But it's, listen, the direction that you're, you want to head in and the direction that I see your mindset um, headed in, 
you want to get to the level where you're living on less than 1% of your income. Less than 1% of your income. So living below your means, yes, but he takes it to a whole other level. Live less than 1% on your income. And the reason why I tell you that this was a game changer is because it challenged me. At the time I talked to him, my expenses were maybe like 10, 15% of my income. And just talking to him, I'm like, um, um, all right, I need to upgrade. I need to go in overdrive. I need to increase my income because he speaks in percentages, which is why it's so brilliant. So the thing is that if you want to live on um, like less than 1%, it, 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 he's not telling you to reduce your, your expenses. He's telling you, if you increase your income, it reduces the percentage and a good target to have is to have your expenses less than 1%. Now you listen to me and you listen to me well. I am not telling you that you should go calculate things now when you say that your expenses are 70% of your income. You should get depressed and you should give up and you should just go back to your 95 and just be, oh my God, why am I here? I'm not telling you that, right? But I'm telling you that you need to know what your end goal is looking like, what you're trying to work towards. And then you put a plan in place, a strategy in place to get you from where you are right now, the 70% of your, of your income being to go into your expenses, to get you to the point where your expenses are less than 1% of your total income. This is kind of what I teach my clients in the Money Society and every time they come for coaching, this is what I do. But pretty much, listen, listen to me. I'm telling you, this, is a, this was a game changer for me, understand? The third lesson that i want to share with you which i sort of already knew but you know just listening to somebody talk about it like that it was really i'm not gonna say it was eye-opening but it really it resonated with me more and it's that your salary alone will never get you wealthy and listen if you know me i'm very argumentative not in a malicious sense but I have a brain and if you tell me something, I'm not gonna just like sit down and just say, yeah, okay, and what and wrong with it if I have questions or if it just doesn't make sense to me. So I was like, well, actually, what if you know you have those CEOs of like major 500, the, the, the top 500 companies or major CEOs in Jamaica? I know several CEOs and I know that they earn pretty decent. So I'm like, well, you know, did you take into consideration people like those? And then you know what he said to me? He said to me, Anna, those kinds of people are not living on just a salary alone as a source of income. What do they do, Anna, typically when they get their salary? Do you think they get their salary of 20 million or 15 million or 10 million dollars per month and they just park it in a bank account? And I was like, hmm, I see where you're going with it. What do they do, guys? They invest the money. They invest the money probably in real estate probably in stocks, they invest the money in some other products, in some other companies. And guess what that does? That produces more income. So it's actually their primary source of income, which will probably start it out as their primary source of income, is actually fueling additional sources of income. So they really don't have just one, if you think about it. So you, with your one, your one source of income, your one nine to five source of income, I am telling you, you will never get wealthy with that income alone. Never get wealthy with that income alone. And there's a subset to this point. He also said to me, well, if you want to expedite, and this is what I've done, if you want to expedite uh, your, your goals or your trajectory or your plans, well, what you do is start a business. Why? There's no cap on how much you can earn. Bam! I'm telling you. You can't say, you're not get no banger from the video, you know. If you know, if you know, if you know, feel like, say, you need to get up and go do something with your life at this point on the video, go on, I don't know what else to say. We'll probably retire from, from YouTube. Come here, tell you, you know, me I'll drop the things and put you, you know, without warning to. Well, with warning, but. The fourth lesson that I want to share with you, I talk about it all the time on this channel, probably not this channel, maybe on my Instagram. But one of the two places I talk about it all the time, and it is that you need to not ignore inflation at all. Inflation literally eats away your money. Inflation are the baddest thief in a life. Nobody never yet see this person. The person have a hundred percent success rate. This person no partial. It's this 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 thief, thief from uptown, middle town, downtown alike. Baddest thief in a life, right? And listen, the only way you can stop this thief 
is by investing. I have a whole video on this. I think the video is called um, um, saving your bank account, maybe keeping a broker or something to that effect. Go watch that video. But this is where um, this lesson emanated from, right? It is that you cannot afford to neglect inflation. I'm telling you, go talk to the wealthiest person you know and ask them, first of all, ask them if they know about inflation. And if they don't know about inflation, they're probably not wealthy. Um, but the second thing is, if they do know about inflation, ask them, well, how do you feel about inflation? And you're going to see, they're going to basically repeat everything I just said. I'm telling you, if you want to get wealthy, you need to look to what the wealthy people have done and you need to replicate. It's that simple. But lastly, the last um, lesson that I learn and that i want to share with you is that you need to have a solid team of an attorney an accountant and a banker whether it is an investment bank or a financial advisor whatever it is but you need to have a solid team of these three why think about it think about the wealthy people that you know don't you know don't you realize that they have their attorney on speed dial their attorney looks over everything everything they don't sign anything without their attorneys okaying it they have an accountant or a tax prof some sort of tax professional um to make sure that you know everything is good and to maximize their earnings join the money society i teach offshore banking and you learn so much more about this so uh but pretty much you need to have a solid team of these people and lastly of the investment banker because well you need to be investing your money refer back to the point i just mentioned but yeah these three points what you need to learn listen the first time i did off i i started thinking about offshore banking was when i was in law school i actually did offshore um banking law i think it's called law of offshore banking i forget what the course is called but i did it in law school and i'm gonna be honest with you before doing that course i thought of offshore banking like think that criminals and bad man them do because of movies and what you see in terms of you know just movies what you read in books but guys listen up listen listen to this if it were illegal you wouldn't have a whole course in law school teaching attorneys or teaching future attorneys how to do it for their clients do you understand you just have to trust when i tell you that there is more to offshore banking than you know or think which is why i have a whole module on it in the money society but that's not what this is about bottom line is you need to invest in a good accountant banker and um, a um attorney right and yes you're probably gonna say where am i gonna get money for this which is why you need to build out your network build it out it's something that you can build by just opening your mouth and going out and being genuine and um intentional about what you're doing also something i teach in the money society how to build a network you know what you should probably join the money society except it's closed right now but when it opens back you should you should probably look into it but anyway guys these are the top five lessons that i have learned from my wealthiest friends and i hope i hope i hope i hope it will help they will help you too all right this is all i have for you today don't forget to like subscribe comment and share especially if you have found this content to be useful because i want it to be uh, um, accessible to so many more people we need to we need to help our friends you see we need to help our friends so that's all i have for you i'll see you in my next video Bye.